In this lesson, we're going to be creating some JavaScript image galleries. So that's going to have the indicators where we've got the next and previous where the user can move through the image galleries. And in this case, we're using the same set of images. That's why they all look the same, but they're all going to function independently. We're going to create a function that's going to generate the indicators, generate the image, generate the gallery that's going to set up and add it into the web page showing you different ways to do that where you can either loop through uh, a loop create a bunch of divs and then add the galleries in there or you can set up and select the elements with a class of gal that you have within your web page already and add the galleries into those elements so that's all coming up in this lesson here's an example of the javascript image gallery maker that creates a simple image gallery with pre next buttons to navigate through the images so I've created an index file. I've linked it to app4.js. So this is just a blank JS file. And what we want to do is we want to create all of the page elements and then add in all of the images within the output area. So we're going to be using the elements and I'm going to update this actually to be class of output. So we can add these image galleries into any element that has a class of output. I'm also going to be updating this and let's uh, Set this as an h1 tag so that we have our JavaScript course heading there. And I'll make this slightly smaller. I do have some images on the same folder that I have that I'm using this file. You can obviously create your own images. And I'll also link to where you can download this from my website. So going into the app.js, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create some elements. So first off, let's select the output element and using the documents and query selector, select the element with a class of output. So it's going to select the first element with a class of output. And then within here, what we want to do is we want to create the galleries. So let's create a function and I'll call it C gallery. And now we're going to invoke this function into the output element. And that's going to create the gallery for us. So we're going to need to have a few elements there within that output element. And the output element is going to be the parent element. So within that output element, go ahead and create a gallery. And this is a variable called gallery. And using the document, we're going to create an element. And the element that we're creating is going to be a div. And then this is going to be the parent where the gallery is going to sit. So we're going to be using the output and append the gallery element object. So now when we go into our elements and within the output, this is where we're going to add in the gallery. So run the code and that creates the div that's contained within the gallery there. So let's go ahead and we're going to add in the other elements. So we are going to need to have an image. So it's going to be the main image object. So whatever the current image is, this is going to be the object that's going to contain that information. And once again, we're going to use the document and create element. And the element that we're creating is going to be an image, so IMG. And for the current image, let's update the source attribute. So set attribute. And the attribute that we're setting is going to be the source. And I'm just going to use the image values that I have here. So I've got a number of images here. And the first one that I have is going to be image JPEG. So we're setting the image within the attribute. And let's go ahead and we're going to add in the button. So this is going to be the button one, where we'll also use the document and create element. And the element that we're going to be creating is going to be a button. And button one will have a text content of previous. And then we'll also create a second button and that will be button two. And this will have text content of next. So it's also going to be a button. And we want to add all of these into the gallery. So just as we appended the output, we can also use the gallery and we can append content into it. So we're appending the current image and then also within the gallery as the parent we can append the button one. And then we also are gallery and append the button two. 
So we've got our image, and we've got all of the elements that are on the page. I'm going to make this shrink it down back to 100%. It will apply a little bit of styling to that, where whatever images we have on the page, so that they fit a little bit better, and any images that we have within the output. And set the max width to be 200 pixels. So that will resize the dimensions of the image. So that's what we have currently for our gallery. Let's also go back to the JavaScript. So we're going to create the array of images. So our images are all going to be contained within an array. So we've got the first one is just one JPEG. And I've given them the names of one, two, three, and four JPEGs so that they're really easy to set the consecutive values of these. And of course, you can create whatever images or whatever number of images that you want within this exercise. So that creates the four images that I have. And let's also, we're going to set the current image value. And we need to use let so that we can update this. So using whatever the current index value is that we want, and it's going to be starting at the index value of zero. So what we want to do too is we want to add event listeners to the images, and we're going to be incrementing these image values. So actually what we're going to do here is we're going to drop this current index into the gallery because we're only going to be using the current index within the scope of the gallery. So now that we've created the values and the buttons, we want to be able to move through the elements and setting up an event listener for the button. So add event listener. And the event that we're listening for is going to be a click event. And it's going to be invoking the function. And this function is going to update whatever the current index value is. And it's going to decrease it. So that will decrease the value. And then we have some conditions here where we can check whatever the current index is. And if the current index is less than 0, then what we'll do is we'll update the current index and we'll set it to whatever the image's length is. So that's going to be the image's array that we have and image's length. So that will handle if the previous is pressed and we don't have any previous images, it will just default to whatever the length of the images is. So we'll automatically go into the last image that we have available. And now let's set the current image source. So we've got our current image here. And you can also set the source using the set attribute, or you can set it within its object source. So both are going to result in the same. And here we've just got the current index. So let's do some quick troubleshooting. And we'll see why this is coming back undefined. So it is coming back as a value of undefined. So within the images, let's make sure that we do have a value for a current image. So we do have a value of 4. But what's happening here is that the length, and because this is an array, we do have four items there within the length, but we need to subtract one from there. So once we do the subtraction of one, now when we select previous, it will default to the last image. So that was the issue that we were having there. So just keep that in mind when you are working with arrays, the arrays are zero based, so they start out at zero, one, two, three. So even those four, you always need to subtract that one. Otherwise, you're going to come across that type of error. So now we've got the previous button working, and we want to update and add the next button. So let's do that as well. And we've got the next button there, so whatever the current index is. And we're going to be looking for, instead of subtracting, we're going to update the current index. And here we're going to be looking for a condition if it's larger than the image's length. And if it's larger than the image's length, then we're just going to set the current index to 0 we know that the starting value of the items in the array is always going to be zero. So it's going to return back the first item. And then we can set the images value there. So let's save that. And now we can go next. We can go previous. And we've got our image gallery working. So the nice thing about creating it within a function is that we can create multiple elements like this and add that into output. So if we had a number of elements there, let's create a few of these image galleries and set the value of x 
12, the value of x is less than 4, so that will create four image galleries for us. And we're going to create the parent element object and adding it into output. So instead of by default adding it into output, let's pass in this as the, the parent element. And so that will take the parent element and append it into the parent element. So that's what will give us a more dynamic way. It's still going to work with the output because we're still passing in output. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to create the number of these galleries and we're going to create some elements on the fly. So the element that we're creating is going to use the document create elements and the element that we're creating is going to be a div. And then we just simply pass the element that we just created into the gallery. And then of course we need to append it to the output element. So that creates a number of different separate galleries and they're all going to work independently. So they can all go through and they are using the same images. So ideally you might have more than one image. And of course you can apply some styling here as well to these elements. So we can create the image and have that as a separate. So we've got our output image and we set that to display block. And you can also apply different styling as well to it. So that will just move the indicators there to the next line. So that gives us a number of different galleries and we can also increase this number. So whatever number of galleries, for whatever reason, if we want to have 12 different galleries all working independently, they're all going to be able to work independently. And so this is just all functioning off of the class of output where we can have a number of different galleries going into that main container. We can also select and if we had a number of galleries that we wanted to set up where we could just use a specific class, we can do that as well. So if we were to create some elements and that have a class of, and any one of these, wherever we're putting them on the page, we can set these up as different galleries for that. So what I'll do is I'll actually comment out this block of code so we'll create the galleries within the output element. So we don't have anything showing there, but we can do selecting all of the galleries using the document query selector all. Select all of the elements with a class of gal. And through those, we can loop through for each one of those and that will return back the element. And here we can select and we can create the galleries out of those. So let's create a number of galleries and let's uh, also, what we'll do is um, we'll add in to the element with a class of gal. So that all of those, we resize them with the styling. So now wherever we've got a element with a class of gal, that's going to add in the gallery using JavaScript code. So go ahead and try it for yourself in order to create some galleries, dynamic galleries using JavaScript code.